Hi and welcome. It is Jennifer. I hope you're having a great day. Today I wanted to show you how you can do overlap inking to create really gorgeous, fun backgrounds. I decided to go with a bold rainbow today, but you could use whatever color palette you want. Now you can do this technique with masking or stamps. I'll talk about both, but I'm going to do stamping today. This is such a fun way to get more out of your inks and create beautiful backgrounds. They look like store-bought pattern papers, but even better. So let's go ahead and jump in. I'm going to be using a stripe from the Simons's Stamp Jumbo Stripes stamp set. Now you could use any bold stripe or border that you may have, border stamp you may have, or like maybe even a square stamp or circles. We just need something pretty basic and solid that you can overlap. I also am going to do my stamping on top of the Sizzix stamping pad. It has a little give to it, and it's helpful when you're needing to stamp solid images like this line. You could use a mouse pad under there if you wanted to. Okay, notice I also have my stamp chamois here. I just wanted to tell you what this is. This is new from Lawn Fawn, and it's a great way to quickly clean your stamps in between each color. Okay, so I have my stamp here on this acrylic block. You'll notice it's hanging off the ends, but I didn't need the length of the stamp, so that's okay. I have inked it up with a Lawn Fawn Pink Flamingo dye ink, and I just stamped it diagonally onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of white cardstock. And it really doesn't matter where diagonally you stamp it, I'm just trying to do it kind of center diagonally on these pieces. Now you'll notice I'm stamping on two pieces because I want to create two backgrounds at once. I might as well since I have the stamps and the inks out. Now you could use any inks for this technique pretty much. I like the effect with dye inks because where we overlap the inks, you'll get a blending and a new color. If you use pigment inks, sometimes since they're opaque, you don't get that cool effect anymore where the two inks kind of blend. So I would recommend trying this with any dye inks. It works great with Hero Arts inks, Simon Says Stamp inks, Lawn Fawn inks. Just try whatever you have on hand. So now this is the new Lawn Fawn Carrot color, which is beautiful. When I stamped this, I made sure I overlapped slightly with the pink stripe that I already stamped. So it's about covering about a third of it. And I'm going to do it on both sides, each time overlapping. And I love it because where we overlapped, it looks like a third color, when really we only two, use two inks here. The reason I'm stamping on both sides of the pink line is this is going to save me a lot of time. If I do uh, a stripe on each side, and we're going to kind of work our way up and down the card, and it takes us a lot less time instead of starting in one corner and going all the way down the card. Okay, so next we have Lawn Fawn Sunflower ink here, and you'll see again we get another ink color where we overlap those inks. So I'm using a stripe stamp here, and I'm overlapping each time I stamp. If you do not have a stripe border stamp, you could put down masking tape and mask like a, a line, a stripe, ink in there with an ink blending tool and a dye ink, then move your mask slightly and overlap some inking in another masked area. So you have masked stripes that overlap. Okay, so I did some green and that was the, uh, gr the freshly cut grass from Lawn Fawn. And this is the new Merman pool colored um, ink from Lawn Fawn. And when I stamped it once, I realized that it was too light of a pool color up against that green. I wanted it to be slightly darker. So you'll notice I'm stamping it once here. Sorry, my head's getting in the way here. I'm stamping it once, overlapping with the green, but I want it to be darker. So I'm gonna stamp it again right on top. So this will make it just a little bit darker and it stands up better against that green. Okay, so at this point I stopped and I went and ate lunch and I came back and now I'm moving on to more colors. So you'll notice the background's kind of toned down a bit and you'll see I'm going back to green now and you'll see that the green I just stamped is darker than the green from before. That's because those dyings kind of absorbed in the paper and toned down a little bit and did some wonderful blending into each other. So you'll, that's why it looks like this green's darker. It's just that I had given time in between. Okay, so now I'm going in reverse direction of the colors and going and filling up the rest of the card space. So now I have a background that is four and a quarter by five and a half, which would cover a note card. And I actually did the two of these, so you can see they both look very similar. I'm going to do one more thing to one of these to show you something else you can do with this, and this I'm really excited about. I took another border stripe from that same stamp set, but it's a narrow stripe, and I've inked it up with a white pigment ink. And I'm just going to stamp this here and there along the background. And this just adds another layer. It looks like we have even more colors that we stamped here. Now this is a pigment ink, so it's going to stay wet. And I kind of like to use my finger to go along the line to kind of blend that in and dab off any extra of the ink. It kind of smooths it out. 
Now you can use any white pigment ink here. My favorites are Hero Arts Unicorn White Pigment Ink, Simon Says Stamp White Pigment Ink, and the Lawn Fawn Yeti White Ink. They are all very similar inks and they work great for this. So the other one I'm going to leave as is, and this one I'm just adding that white over. This is just a great way to add even more. You can add some darkness to areas if you want to by stamping with a light gray ink on top of this. You could even use this technique to create a plaid background, but I thought it'd be fun just to do the stripes. Now remember, if you have like a square, you could do like an argyle print where you just stamp it repeatedly and it, you know, to look like diamonds repeating the background and overlap some too. Okay, so the piece on the left is the one that I, we did originally, and the piece on the right has the white pigment ink stripes added on top. They're both really nice, but I really think this one's fun because it has such beautiful variation between colors. Now since we use a pigment ink, I'm going to go ahead and heat set this with a heat gun so I make sure that I don't mess it up and it's not sticky to the touch. Also, I'm going to do some heat embossing on top of this, so I want to make sure those inks are good and dry. Now that our backgrounds are complete, I want to do some simple white heat embossing on top so that we can keep the rest of the cards quite simple. Okay, the two stamp sets that I'm using are from Simon's Stamp. We have Spring Flowers on the left. I think this is a gorgeous set that would be great for some watercoloring. And then on the right, we have the Friendship Blooms. I'm going to be using the sentiments from this, but there are some beautiful images there that would be great for coloring also. Okay, so I want to have my sentiment on this background with the flower kind of behind it. So I need to do a little masking around our sentiment. So I'm just quickly stamping the sentiment onto a piece of sticky tape here. This is just like a post-it tape. And I am just quickly cutting around it. It doesn't have to be fancy. I just basically want to mask an area where our sentiment will be added. And by the way, I took one of the background pieces that we created and cut it in half right down the middle so I could create two cards from it. I'm taking the mask and putting it where I want the sentiment to be, and now I'm going to use my anti-static powder tool over this. I want to make sure I do this because if any of those inks are still wet on the background, then bossing powder would stick to it, and I don't want to have a mess. So I'm making sure that I am very generous with the anti-static powder. We can wipe this away. It'll kind of make the surface look white at first, but once we're done with it, we can wipe it off. So first I'm going to do the stem from that flower stamp set. I have inked it up with Versamark ink. It's just a clear sticky ink that will allow us to white heat emboss. I'm going to stamp the stem and notice I'm stamping right over the mask so that we'll have a clean area where we can add our sentiment later. I have added some Hero Arts white embossing powder. I like this powder because it's a bright white powder. And then I'm going to stamp the flower above that. I could have heated that embossing powder first, but I decided to just go ahead and do this and do all the heating at once. So I'm stamping the flower at the top of the stem with Versamark once again, and I'll add the same white embossing powder on it. Now I actually think I could have used more of a bold stamp for this, and it would really have stood out more, but I love the delicateness of this flower stamp set. Okay, so I went ahead and removed my mask. I'm going to let my heat gun get hot. Then I'm going to bring it to my paper to go ahead and melt that embossing powder. So now we have that area in the center that's open, and we can go ahead and do our embossing of the sentiment there. I'm rubbing my hands over the piece to wipe away any of that extra anti-static powder that was left behind. So now I have that same prayer sentiment that I used for the mask, and I'm just going to stamp that in the open area with Versamark, add my white embossing powder, and heat set that. I went ahead and did the same to the other vertical piece so that I could create two cards from the one background. Okay, so now with the other background piece that I created, I cut it down the center in the other direction so I'd have two smaller and wider rectangles. And I'm going to use the same sentiment stamp set that I showed you before, just a few different sentiments from that set, and the same flower set but a different flower. Again, I'm using the white embossing powder so that that bright white image stands out against the colorful background. The fun thing about this technique is you can use any color inks that you want and pretty much any stamps on top with the white embossing powder and it keeps for a very simple card. So now I have my four stamped pieces ready for four different cards. I wanted to add this to a simple white card but I wanted a little bit of interest in the background. If you look closely you'll see some diagonal faux stitching on the background. I wanted to show you how I did that. I wanted to make sure that the diagonal stitching in the background kind of matched up with the angle of the diagonals on the pattern paper stripe. The engineer in me was forcing me to do this. So I am putting my stamp piece onto the white note card where I want it to be and putting little tick marks that kind of line up with those diagonal stripes. Just a couple so that it helps me line up my stitch line. 
I'm using a faux stitch border die from this Lawn Fawn border die set, and I have a piece of tape here to hold it in place. I'm going to line that border die up with the little tick marks that we created on the note card and run this through my die cut machine. Now this die will not cut the paper into two. Instead, it just puts little tick marks, little faux stitch marks that create a little bit of interest in the background. After I've gone through once, I'm gonna move the border die over a little bit so I can create another faux stitch line that's very close to the first one. And I'm going to do the same a third time. So I have three lines in the background. And remember the angle of these diagonal lines lines up with the diagonal lines that I have in my pattern paper. So it all kind of goes together. It helps it kind of flow together. So this is just a top folding white note card that I created. Actually, it's a little bit smaller than a typical card. It's about five by four inches. It just seemed to fit the proportions of my background piece a bit better. Okay, so now that I have my uh, border dies done there, I just erased my little tick marks, and now I'm going to adhere a piece of craft foam behind our stamped piece. This will give it some nice even dimension so that we, it kind of pops up off of our card. I didn't use foam tape because I'm afraid that if I put this in the mail that 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 panel that we created, the stamped panel, would get crushed. And by using a solid piece of craft foam behind there, I can be sure it'll make it through the mail okay. I like to use double-sided tape to adhere that craft foam between. I did the same thing with all four of the cards. So all of the stamp panels are added with that dimension behind it, and I have the faux stitch diagonal lines in the background. It's amazing the difference that faux stitching in the background makes in kind of pulling this card together. So there you have a fun way you can overlap your inks, either with stamping or masking, to create colorful backgrounds that are the perfect backdrop to some fun stamped images. Now, if you're interested in the products that I talk about here, they are linked below in my YouTube description, but I encourage you to go to my blog. I have a lot more information, including a giveaway and a blog hop. Just click there on my logo on the top left to head to the, my blog. In the middle are three other videos that involve overlapping inks, just different techniques. I encourage you to check those out because there's some more fun things you can do with the inks you already have. If you haven't done so already, be sure to hit the subscribe button. I'd love to have you come back and we'll see you again soon.